Hi, my name is Ron Johnson. And for you that don't know me out there, I'm a mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are stuck, unfulfilled, happy with their, unhappy with their circumstances, and at the same time want to build better relationships. So today I'm going to discuss stick up for yourself. Now, for many of us out there, we obviously assume that we stick up for ourselves when things don't go right, or we stick up for others, or more importantly, it's always easy for us to stick up for others when we're sticking up for ourselves. Obviously, we stick up for other people, it proves to be much more fulfilling than sticking up for yourself. So back to by myself, for a lot of years, I just went with the flow. I didn't stick up for what my wants are, my desires, and more importantly, in a relationship, I just went with the flow because I'm thinking, well, I'm with this girl, she's with me, I'm fearful of being alone, so I'm just gonna stick up, I'm just gonna stay closed mind and not stick up for myself because I was feared that if I stick up or say something she doesn't like, she's gonna leave me. And that was my fear, she was gonna leave me. And that's just one example, but I can go countless examples of even my young adult childhood where I just went with the flow. I, I didn't feel a certain, I felt a certain way, but I was afraid of, if I didn't, if I stuck up for myself, I didn't say what I mean, I wouldn't fit in and no one would like me. So what happens, we don't stick it for yourself. It hurts. It hurts a lot of ways because when you silence how you really feel, all you're doing is subduing your emotions and subduing how you really feel. And obviously that doesn't prove very rewarding for yourself or even for others, because sometimes people encourage your opinion or encourage how you feel because they want to get a better understanding where you're coming from. And that again itself just proves to be unsatisfactory for both parties. But why do we not stick it for ourselves? Most of the time, we don't stick up for ourselves because we come to the conclusion that if I stick up for myself, I'll be judged. Or if I stick up for myself, this will be the outcome. You know, if I go ask my boss for a raise, he may fire me. If I go ask my boss for an increase, he won't give it to me. But nine times out of ten, the reason why people don't get increases in their, their paycheck is because they don't ask. They don't say, what can I do? They don't stick up for themselves when something's being wrong. It's easy for us to tell the people what to do when they're going through difficulty. How many of us have friends out there we stuck it for them and says, well, you should be doing this, or you should be doing that, but we can't do it for ourselves. What proves to be true a lot of times is that this fear, our false evidence appearing real, that's what fear stands for, are more important conclusions. See, we create these conclusions of these outcomes that do not exist. Outcomes and conclusions only exist in our mind. Once we go through those walls and come up with a better conclusion for other things, it proves to be more satisfactory for us. One important way to overcome let's say these create these fears or exclusion of mind is to challenge them. If they're happening, why are they happening? And challenge that. If your fear is, I'm gonna ask my boss to raise, well, obviously you challenge that. So what is the fear? The fear is, well, if I ask my boss to raise, it may not happen. Okay, then what? Well, I look for another job. Okay, then what? See, every single time you have to come up with then what, it's simply just going to ask it. Because the fear is, if I don't ask for a raise, well, the fear is, if I ask for a raise, I don't get it. The fear could be also fast for a raise and they get fired. But if you don't ask, you don't know. Let's talk about relationships. How many of us have been in a relationship where, over time, communication just sucks, okay? And this is obviously what I'm talking about in marriage, relationships, dating, whatever it may be. Communication sucks. The other person feels a certain way. They just don't talk about it. They just don't bring it to uh, a, of a conversation. And the only time it comes up is when you're upset. I'm a victim of that, right? I'm not perfect, but I'm here to help you guys be more better. When I'm in a relationship, if I feel a certain way, I don't stuck up for myself. Now, what happens when I'm in a relationship, I do stick up for myself after I become angry, <laughs> right? It's funny, when you become angry, that's when you find saying something, and that proves obviously be suffering both parts. But more importantly, it's that fear behind being judged or being critical of others, or more importantly, trying to say to ourselves, well, I'm in this mar marriage, we have kids together, but I'm not going to say anything because he pays the bills or he takes care of me or, or she's very friendly. Well, obviously, at the end of the day, you know, avoiding water is so and so big, right? So if you turn the fire up, it boils over. What do you do? You turn the fire down, right? And boiling water because it's boiling over. That's what happens to subdued fear and emotions is that we keep subduing them, suppressing them. Eventually, it boils over. And again, that's what comes very angry, that person now has to defend themselves and obviously it's a big clash. So how do you go about doing that? Again, you create thoughts in your mind, you're creating outcomes, or I just give an example, you're creating um, justification for something you don't feel well about, 
justification of why this is happening. Justification because I'm in a marriage, I should be doing, I should be okay because my husband doesn't communicate with me because, well, he takes care of house school, he takes care of the kids. At the end of the day, you're only suffering for yourself, right? I gave this example before with the balloon. A balloon is this big, right? But if you squeeze one side, the other side pops. If I squeeze the top, the bottom side pops. And at the end of the day, again, something else happens. Uh, maybe you start going out with your friends more. Maybe you start drinking more. Maybe you start getting very frustrated and it takes out on the kids. And you don't want that to happen. So communication is key and stepping into that fear and challenge your conclusion will prove to be more fulfilling for you and give you greater outcomes and greater satisfaction for your personal needs. So when times do come up, don't wait to get angry or to come to inclusion, well, this happened because of this, challenge it. Step into your own power. Be you. And at the same time, you build more self-esteem, more confidence. Because fear only creates new levels of fear. Fear doesn't go away, unfortunately. I wish it does. I wish one time you do one thing and it goes away forever, but it doesn't. But if you step into that fear every single time something comes up, because if you don't do it the first time, the same situation comes up again. It'll keep coming up until you step into that fear and challenge those conclusions, challenge that mindset. It's going to feel much better. Again, this is Ron Johnson, mentor coach. I help people stuck on the field and want to live a much better life. Thank you for listening.